I have the right to do anything you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but I will not be mastered by anything. That's 1 Corinthians 6.12, and that's something that I could easily apply to my life about many things, but in this case, it's gambling. You know, I just saw an article that in Arizona, the Diamondbacks, Chase Field, they are implementing the first ever sports book, a Caesars sports book, into their stadium so people can go to a game and place bets in between innings or whenever they want. You can bet on just about everything, and I don't know if it'll be limited to baseball. I'm assuming you'll be able to bet on any other sports if it's a full sports book. But the bottom line is, that's what the world does. It normalizes things that should not be normalized. I used to have a major gambling addiction, and it started in high school, uh, betting on games with friends. We'd be betting on games that we were playing. We'd go home, we'd watch football, we'd bet on games. We had a we had a bookie back then. I remember one friend got into so much debt that he he couldn't keep up, and he ended up having to like work some of it off. And it took him like over a year at one point. But we didn't really learn our lesson. I went to Atlantic City for the first time, got really lucky, won a lot of money. Then I went to Vegas for the first time, won a little bit of money. But then eventually, after a big payday, I started going there all the time, and there was nothing like the rush of either being at a table or being in the sports book. And it shouldn't be any surprise that's what the world pushes upon us. I look at when I was growing up, we didn't have nearly the same propaganda coming at us to gamble the way it is today. Now it's commercial for online betting, for fantasy sports, for you know prop bets galore, even ESPN, the sports, the worldwide sports leader, as they call themselves, for sports news. But they're just the, the biggest puppeteers now of enslavement and bondage to gambling because it's hard just to watch games for the love of the game anymore. I'm trying to allow myself that privilege, especially now during the playoffs. I want to watch good matchups without having anything riding on it other than appreciating the athleticism and the competition between athletes. That's why I normally gravitate to college sports because there's a pureness in that game that is now also being kind of defiled, but that's a whole other story. But there was nothing like the rush, the adrenaline rush of trying to go after that easy money. But it was never easy. It was never free because it felt like free money when you win a lot of money. But it's, but it's not free. But because the world has us so insulated in chasing after things of the flesh, the next rush, the next chase, we're not focused on truth and things that matter the God that created us, that gave us a servant's heart, unless we allow the world's influence to push us into the carnal that does not want to serve others. We only want to serve ourselves. And then, you know, if we have a good payday, maybe we'll share it. But it's all things that keep us in bondage to this world. And it seems normal. When I was doing it, most of my friends were doing it. it seemed like everybody was doing it. And yet, I used to play poker all the time, and I've mentioned this before. When I saw poker becoming so normalized on ESPN with the World Series of Poker, something told me that's not right. I knew that there was something inherently wrong with what I was doing, especially on nights when I would lose. And I was putting all this effort, putting all of my attention into trying to, in poker, lie to others, basically, when you bluff, trying to trick people out of their money. It was just something inherently that felt morally ambiguous, to say the least. But I still enjoyed it, and because the world applauded it, it seemed okay. But there was something tugging at my conscience that eventually pulled me back from playing that. 1 Timothy 6, 9-10 says, Those who want to get rich fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. Some people eager for money have wandered from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. We've seen it again and again. People win the lottery, and then all of a sudden, all these problems come because people want that money. So there's never any easy way out. But when you're always chasing the next rush, and it's not just limited to gambling. Obviously, drugs, alcohol, sex, like there's all these different things we chase. And then you reach one plateau, and then you want to go to the next plateau. But it's never enough. 
we always are left with a void and wanting more. 2 Peter 9, 2.19, they promise them freedom while they themselves are slaves of depravity, for people are slaves to whatever has mastered them. And there was a time when my love of, of gambling and chasing after that money, like if I had already, if I was already making a lot of money, I don't think I would have had the same adrenaline rush. There's just something to it, having something riding on what you're watching. And it's taken a while for me to break away from that. I'm very thankful that right now in California, you can't go online and place a bet. I'm definitely glad I don't go to that many in-person games anymore. But if there was a sports book where I went, I would not want that temptation. The God of this world, Satan, he wants us to have that temptation because he knows we will fall in our flesh if given too many times an idle time. And what are we doing? It's nothing but idle time, leisure time when you're at a game. That's when the enemy really tries to roar and pounce on you to get you to indulge in things that are dangerous. Anything that pulls you away from living a life of service to God and service to others and glorifying him with your actions, chasing things of this world because of the love of money, the thrill of the chase, are not things from God, but this world is creating a system that has us in bondage and in slavery to those things. I still play fantasy. I've backed out of, the, I used to be in like three leagues. I've backed down to one. It's just a lot of longtime friends that we do once a year for football. Every now and again, I'll do daily, but I'll even feel the conviction of that. I haven't done that in quite some time. But every now and again, especially if I'm going to a game or if the Orioles are playing, I'll have a little fun. But I'm not advocating for that because it can be a slippery slope. What goes from a casual thing to, oh, I won. Now I want to keep doing it. That's you let the enemy get his hooks in you, and then, then you've got a problem. So when you know that's what the world is trying to do, to suck you in a vacuum, to have you chasing these things that will never add up to the peace of the Lord inside of you, um, that's when you can fight back and just be aware. Gambling is no better or worse than any other sin out there. Anything that keeps you from focusing on God and what he's called us here to be, and that's to be vessels of his love and grace to others, even in a world that rejects it, uh, is, is a thing you want to refrain from. So I pray this finds you well. God bless you. See you tomorrow.